Okay, 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 Russia. This has been on mine. It's been on mine. <laughs> ah, those guys. Now look, those Bay Area Oakland guys. Yeah, they're all in their early twenties and uh, immature and doing things. To reflect back on that thirty years later and think, ah, oh, those cruel memories. You know, when we used to tear the t-shirts and uh, tear the Motley Crew and Guns N' Roses t-shirts off those poses and um, make them make them grimace in pain. Um, really? I'm sincerely glad that I was not part of that scene at all. And I didn't think I would have been able to tolerate Kirk Campbell's. I actually don't think that I would have been able to tolerate any of those Exodus guys. Um, what is described as going on with those early gigs? Um, what is described about going on with those early gigs? Well, that sort of thing didn't happen in Sydney. What happened to those early gigs? Well, so. What the goings on at those early gigs? The goings on at those early gigs. Uh, what a what a what a what a sounds like a massacre, and I think some of us traumatised. But really, it just sounds it sounds brutal and savage. Well, I imagine like this part, the venue and the park area. And just these kids in their twenties, and this is you know this is, this is a decade before my generation, and just having angst and and that there was no internet in those days, and just just doing whatever and getting themselves into all sorts of trouble and doing vandalism and and they were they were expressing their anxieties and their anger. That's understandable that they're expressing their anxieties, but when this is very unappealing to me. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to go to Oakland one day. I will go to Oakland because I'm, I'm curious about Oakland. I'd like to go to Oakland. Uh, I'd like to explore Oakland for myself, for at least a day. For at least a day. For <laughs> Um, been sitting here the last hour. I'm actually watching. I'm actually watching Forever Consciousness Research Channel. I also recommend Howdy Mikoski. I'm watching the Forever Conscious Research Channel. Uh huh. I needed to say a few more words about sadistic execution. In regard of sadistic execution. Um, okay. So this is it. Oh my god. I can't say it. there's no good way to say this. Sadistic execution. Overseas sadistic execution do have a reputation. They also had a reputation here as being not very good. Because this European magazine wrote up about them, and what happened was they did a write up about them calling them the biggest, most prominent death metal band to come out in a very long time. And those guys here, they, they saw the article, and they said, Well, if we're being called the, one of the biggest, most prominent important death metal bands in the world. We want to be paid for it. We want to be handsomely paid for that. 
Now, I'll pause there for a moment. Sadistic execution had a handful of gigs in Sydney at the time. I don't think I attended all of them. I did attend a few of them. The problem was that all the other bands that were on the scene at the time did regular gigs. And the problem with sadistic execution was that the gigs were irregular. They used to take a long time to get a gig set up. Like maybe you'd have a gig with sadistic. In the beginning days, I think it was once a fortnight, maybe once every three weeks. And then they went to Europe. And they came when they came back from Europe. The thing was, the gigs were irregular and they wanted more money for them. There were other aspects and factors involved. But the sadistic execution gigs themselves were dreadful, really dreadful. The problem was that Rock was a clown. He was didn't take it seriously. It was a bit of a joke. He was a clown and it was an absolute mess. Pete, very talented drummer. Chris Hayes, very talented guitarist. Dave Slave, ex extremely good on the bass guitar, very good. Put them all together and actually put them all together and they're very good. But if Rock had have taken it seriously, he didn't take it seriously, unfortunately. But put them all together, bit of a mess. And live, not very good live. Not very good at all. Yet individually, Pete with Eight Ball Junk is fantastic, and Pete with his own solo stuff. He did a lot of songs that he wrote himself and would go and record himself. Pete is excellent on the guitar and has written many songs, fantastic songs. Chris Hayes has done fantastic work, and Dave Slade by himself is um. That's fantastic. Dave Slade by himself is um incredible. Actually, do I have a sticker here? Every single time I do this, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm on live podcast and I'm not on live podcast. Let me just see if... Oh, look at that. Oh, look what I just found. I just found this. I'm going to put this on my jacket. I'm going to put this on my denim jacket. I got that. I bought that quite a while ago. Let me get to put it in my jacket, don't I? Now... Are you thinking that are you, th are, you, are you thinking that this is such a fantastic video and no one that no one could ever make a video ever ever make a video better than this ever ever ever? That's what you're thinking, aren't you? You're thinking, oh, Pat is so fantastic at making videos. Oh, you're so fantastic at making videos. You're the best. You're the best. You're the best. Oh, you're the best. <laughs> I'm trying to find a sticker. I'm trying to find a sticker. Because Dave Slave gave me a sticker. I used to keep it over there. It's probably down in the garage. I'm not going to go in the garage to get. Get it. Oh, what I found. See, what I found this. Pete's bag. Um, Mr. Alley Moonshine was. Uh, every time you see Dave Slay, he talks about his um, project, and now I can't bloody remember it in the moment. I don't know where I put things, because I continually shift things, all the time I continually shift things around for better convenience, you know, for better convenience. <laughs> now, I bet it's in the garage, I'm not going to go to the garage for it. Hmm, I'm not going to go to the garage for it. I used to keep it just over there, it's not over there anymore. I was saying, individually, individually, uh, they have fantastic projects. So great. Chris Hayes is so versatile in the way he plays it. They put them together as the execution and it was bloody it was it was really t on record it was extremely good. On record it was really good. Live, absolutely terrible and dreadful live. Really terrible and dreadful live, unfortunately. And however, with their separate projects, with all their individual separate projects, terrific live. Really terrific live. Just sometimes happens to be the case. So as long as you can get average musicians, you put them, average musicians, you put them together, and they can sound good. Like Motley Crue is an example. 
Wow, Mick Mars is fantastic. Tommy Lee is a great drummer. Nicky Six barely able to play the bass. Barely able to play the bass. And unfortunately, Vince's voice stopped being... Vince never had a great voice. Never had a great voice. His approach to the studio never had a great voice, but a reasonable front man. Never had a great voice. Never had a great voice, but it, it, it was the sound of crew. But Mick Mars, driving force of the band, I digress. And you can get four fantastic... You can get... So I don't think really rock was a strong point. Rock was never a strong point in the band. Ever. Uh, anyway. Um, not great live. And whenever they, put on, and whenever they did perform live, which was usually at the Lewisham Hotel, and matter of fact, I don't presently live about a 10 minute drive from the Lewisham Hotel, which is that way. Um, um, and, 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 and not because of any gigs or anything, it's just to find a place in this area. Just happened to find a lived in this area for many a year now. Um, having grown up ten minutes away from here. Now, uh what I was gonna say was um yeah. Look by themselves by themselves really terrific musicians, really terrific, but unfortunately the sadistic execution outfit didn't go well live, it was not good live, really, really, really bad, and, um, th th yeah, uh, sorry, it was just a bit on my mind to say that, it's been on my mind to say that, um, but on record, very interesting on record, very interesting on vinyl. Mm. Yeah, okay. Have I, have I entertained? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Alright, that'll be enough of that. Okay, uh, look, Midnight Charlie Man, thank you. Midnight Charlie Man, Patrick, thank you for watching, thank you for listening, I really, I really appreciate it. And I had felt the need to say, to say more. I had felt the need to say more. Okay, so uh, very good. And thank you, thank you for watching. Well, hello there, young Thomas. How you going? Hey, what's going on here? Oh. I came all the way down the garage. I was missing. I was just upstairs. I was looking for this. I was looking everywhere, but I, I shift things around a lot, a great deal. And uh, I found it. Doomed and disgusting. See, that's Dave Slayer's project. Doomed and disgusting. A very good project. Really, really good. Uh, very talented musician, artist, and I've had these stickers for a while. Oh yeah. Okay. The reason why I didn't stick them anywhere, I have this thing. I have this thing that I like to preserve things. I really like to preserve things, and I feel like if I unstick this and put it on somewhere, I won't be preserving it. And so one day I'm going to actually have it on display somewhere. I, I just don't like unsticking things. I can't remember, he gave this to me a couple of years ago when I bumped into him on the street. Uh, when he was having a walk. Uh, doomed and disgusting. Uh, I thought maybe they were in the garage. And, and, and so, and they were in this box down here. Uh, okay, very good. I don't buy CDs anymore. Uh, there's so much stuff down here. I've got all these CDs there. They're they're, um, didn't even know I had that. Oh, okay. I didn't know I had that. I, it's not even taken out of its plastic yet. Didn't know I had it. Still in its plastic. I bought it four years ago. Um, oh. Still in its plastic. <sighs> I bought this a few years back. St I still haven't unwrapped this. I still haven't unwrapped it. Oh, uh, still haven't unwrapped it. My original copy. It's my original copy. I bought this in 1990, all a bit ratty now, a bit ratty. Ah, oh, no, no, not rat, GNR, no pun intended. <laughs> so listen, listen, listen. Uh, oh, these are my jeans. I'm, I'm making these into um, uh, um, flares, bell bottoms. I'm making these into bell bottoms, and I've still got one like this, so... And these my skinny jeans, which I'm turning into bell bottoms. I've been working on those since... Um, I was going to... 
been on them since about August last year. I was going to wear them to GNR on November 26 and um, 27, and they weren't ready. Like two days beforehand, these weren't ready. I'm like, I can't finish these in two days. It's just impossible for me to finish these in two days. So here on the floor they sit. They just sit here on the floor. I'm, I'm, I'm going back upstairs now. I'm going back upstairs. I just like, I'm going back upstairs. I just came down here to see the sticker was there, and it's there. And um, no, I don't know thing in front of the camera. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh. Thank you for watching. I'm going back upstairs now. Oh, I'm going back upstairs. <laughs> Indeedy, indeedy so. I did come back upstairs. Oh, so that was an exploration and um, the re So, so this is the execution. were demanding a high amount of money per year because they were, in the, the magazine said, you know, they're one of the biggest death metal bands in the world and they wanted to be paid for that. So, gigs became less and less frequent in Sydney uh, upon this and so everything just really became a mess so you had every other band that was on the metal scene at the time doing regular gigs and sadistic, ex sadistic execution just uh, were not and uh, just went downhill from there but that Oakland scene I mean Interesting. I mean, it's just it's interesting. It's an interesting scene. It's, um, but again, in, in, I was very young and immature once as well. Uh, it was, uh, but the city scene. I can say that from what I've heard, from what I have heard about what took place on that thrash metal scene in the Bay Area in San Francisco at the time in the early 80s it was nothing like what I experienced on the Sydney metal scene a decade later. And from what I, uh, I didn't go out to the metal scenes in Sydney in the 1980s. I was at home watching movies, listening to the top 40 charts, and um, just discovering Black Sabbath and Ozzy Osbourne. But I, from what I have heard, it was from what I have heard, it was very similar to the scene that I started out on in the 90s. Similar. But that one in Oakland, rough around the edges, and bits and pieces of information that I've heard through this documentary and in the interviews gets me a, a, it's a perspective, and it's a, um, it's a perspective and uh, an interesting one, and I feel like I wouldn't have done. I wouldn't have done well on that scene. I just wouldn't have done well. I would have done very well on the Hollywood scene, in the LA and on Sunset Strip. I think I would have, I would have loved it. I would have been a bit, a bit envious. I wasn't there. I would have loved the Sunset Strip scene. I would have loved it. Really, really loved it. Um, <laughs> I would have like, when, when I was in Hollywood. I, uh, oh, I truly, I thought it was fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up now. I'm gonna wrap this, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. And so, very good. I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna actually upload this. Because sometimes what happens is, I've uploaded a video, I think of all these other things to say, I think of extended points that I want to make, and then it bothers me, and then so I really do it. So I've done it. And I didn't turn the lantern light on because I just, this is going to be a quick video. I just didn't feel like turning the lantern light on. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Midnight Charlie Man Patrick here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And uh, comments down below. And yes, thank you. Yes, it's happened. I'm literally converting this shortcut and realizing that I've got to say this. I've got to say this. Sadistic execution live were an interesting disaster. I mean, they were interesting to watch live. Uh, they didn't have a tight set by any means, but they were. And rock. Rock is actually. I've got to say these things about rock. But the front man, rock. Great artist. Very good artist. And I think he did some of the album jumps. I think Chris 
did somebody because Chris is also an excellent artist as in he draws excellent pictures but Rock Rock is also responsible for doing some of the some of the artwork for sentencing execution uh, just that whether he was pissed off about the whole thing live this did, they weren't enjoying themselves live but however they were interesting to watch live like an interesting disaster um, yes I just wanted to say that okay okay oh, 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 yeah. oh, yeah. I just wanted to say that okay alright okay so what I'm going to do now is transfer this to the computer and then I'm going to put it into shortcut and then I'm going to convert it because sometimes I have to go to all this trouble oh yeah sometimes I have to go to all this trouble oh yeah sometimes I have to do okay that's what I'm going to do now alright